Hi there, welcome back. Uh, a, a day before, I think we've uh, spoke about, you know, we looked at task management, the state of task management in Office 365. One of the task management app that I love so much in Office 365 is the Microsoft Planner. Uh, there are so many use cases for uh, using Microsoft Planner uh, yeah, in, in your uh, in your day-to-day business workflow. Um, we'll, co- we'll cover the actual user scenarios in a different uh, vlog. But before we jump in and actually start looking at the actual product itself, the go through the different features of uh, Microsoft Planner and you know, share some of the tips like I always do, I wanted to actually, you know, showcase how you could actually classify a tasks. So that's the key strength of Planner is, is there are so many ways you could actually classify a task. It's not just all about creating a task saying, oh, I'm going to do this on a, on, a, on, a, on a date and then putting a status next to it, right? Not just that. In, in Microsoft Planner, you could actually classify um, your task at, at, uh, at various different stages uh, at, at using various different uh, tags and so on. So let's look into how you could classify um, you know, a, a task inside Microsoft Planner, all right? Let's, uh, I'm just gonna actually do this differently. I'm not gonna show the app itself, but I've actually created a mind map uh, where I've collected different, uh, you know, um, things that I know of uh, on how you could use Microsoft, uh, how you could actually, sorry, classify tasks in Microsoft Planner. So let's uh, have a look. All right, uh, here we have uh, in a quick mind map that I've created for classification of tasks in Planner. Before we go into the uh, the juicy stuff, I wanted to touch base on the the core elements of classification in uh, in in the planner itself. So obviously, for a task, you need dates, yeah. So you need a start date and an end date, which is good. Uh, that's pr- I'm not going to talk more about that. Then you have progress. So um, within progress, you can subclassify a progress into uh, you know not started. When you create a new task, automatically it's put into a default is not started. Then you can change the task to in progress and then complete it. That's well and said, uh, you know, Jag, what's new about that? It, you know, it's pretty straightforward. But the thing is the combination of the progress classification and the dates classification will actually give you something called, you know, used for notifications. So let's say you have, you set an end date, a due date, and then if not, if it's in progress or it's not, uh, if it's not set as completed, if it's not started, then it automatically sends notification for you, right? You can actually manage those notifications. We look into the actual how you manage notifications and stuff like that. So classifying a task using dates and progress allows you to be more on top of things. Then you also have something like, you know, assignment. You, you could assign a task for a single user or for a multi, multi or m- multiple people. So, which is good. So again, from a team tasks management point of view, that's that's really uh, very useful as well. Where Planner differentiates itself from the other task management apps is is something called buckets. All right. So let's look at what what are buckets. So within buckets, buckets are actually designed uh, for for a a task to be moved. You know, you can drag and drop a task from one bucket to the other. All right. So again. A task can only be in one bucket at any point of time. So that's why I say it's one dimensional, okay? You can't assign multiple buckets to a single task at any one point of time. So you, it's designed for moving tasks from one area to the other. So let's look at some of the usage case uh, scenarios for this, all right? So this could be, say, project phases, all right? Uh, you create a bucket for each of the project phase. Let's say you have an initiation phase, you have an implementation phase, you have a testing phase and you know, go live and support and whatnot. You know, depending on what sort of uh, software development or you know, any other, even it could be hardware and software rollouts. You know, if you use customized phases within your software and hardware rollouts within your business, you create a bucket for each phase, okay? And then you create them all in one area and then uh, one bucket, uh, the starter, uh, A, then you move them to B, and, and so on, and then you move them to the C, and so on. So then you have, uh, from a usage uh, point of view, you could, you could also use it like in, a, in your workflows. Let's say you have employee onboarding workflow, right? Uh, say the workflow could be with an employee work, um, employee onboarding workflow, let's say HR creates a contract, contracts get signed, all right? So it's within the HR boundary. Now, once the contract has been approved, once you send an email out, it's within the actual person, right? So you could actually say, uh, with with the with the applicant or something like that, and then uh, once the applicant is approved, it, it can go into IT for account provision, all right? It can go into finance for uh, setting up payroll and 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 whatnot. 
So you see that you can actually have uh, buckets for each department within that particular workflow. All right. So let's say you have your HR department within a departmental site, a team, a team site in your HR. Then you create a plan. Now that a single group can create support multiple plans, which we'll talk about that in, in more detail later. But now, now that a single Office 365 group can support multiple plans, you could create one plan predominantly for employee onboarding, bring in people from finance, bring in people from IT. Uh, bring, uh, again, you have people from HR involved in there. Uh, multiple people can collaborate together and, 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 and do this employee onboarding. It's, 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 it's very fantastic about that. So now uh, with, with respect to workflows, you know, not just employee onboarding, that's just an example that I, I can think of. Uh, you could use, say, approvals, okay? It could be business approvals, uh, you know, document approvals or uh, any approvals for that matter. You create each approval stage can be a bucket and then you pass on the task from one bucket to the other, one approval stage to the other. All right. So it also could be, you know, any, any business work types as well. For example, business functions such as case management or operations. Operations could be, let's say you are a, uh, a logistics company. All right. Uh, so you have you can have buckets, let's say order placed, order delivered, order in progress or something like that from a from an operations perspective. Or it could be a case management. Let's say you get a compliant raised or you could get any a, 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 a case allocated right so it could be by allocation if it's allocated per team or by, by stage or whatnot so you could actually take that case from one stage to the other so few few business use cases around uh, uh, buckets all right so but remember the one thing to keep in mind is uh, when you create a plan you get a bucket called to do i really don't like the, the to do everything is to do in this particular area we're, we're dealing with tasks so get rid of the to do app right rename rename the to do a bucket inside your default planner and then use them for stages or right? these are all based on a life cycle of a task keep that in mind and you create a bucket for each stage of that uh, each uh, each stage of the of the life cycle of the task all right so that's buckets so the next thing i wanted to cover of the other way of classification is you know not just that you could actually provide even further subclassification for uh, you know for a task and that's where labels come into play so labels are actually multidimensional, right? And by multidimensional, I mean you can actually assign multi, multiple labels at the same time. So, uh, yeah, for a single task, you can actually assign multiple uh, labels, up to I think six labels. Uh, you could you, you could organize, you could assign uh, six labels for a single task. So the usage scenario could be, you know, these are let's say color coded, meaning you know you could say priorities, you know, based on severity levels, you know, for support cases you could say urgent or uh, mid-level or low-level priority for risk, you could say high risk, low risk, and so on. Or, you know, you could also say dependencies, okay? Um, you could create dependencies around businesses, all right? These are dependent on, uh, on a different task, or for example, it has to, uh, these are these are all categorized as approval-based approval, uh, approval -based labels. So that's where you can actually have, you can not just have just the severity levels or dependencies or categories uh, within business, you know, business categories could be you know, I don't know, some keywords within your business, the software, hardware, whatnot, uh, departmental-based keywords, anything anything specific to your business could be there as well. But remember, there's only six labels you could assign. You can't just come up with a big managed metadata set of like in an enterprise keywords and, and start assigning tasks around that. You could do that. Just make sure that you have, you pick the top right six uh, six uh, labels and then, and then you could actually reuse them across your tasks within that particular um, plan. And remember, each plan, when you create a plan, can have a different set of uh, uh, key, different set of labels, right? So you have HR, then you have HR keywords in there. You you have uh, IT, you can you could use IT keywords and so on. So that's that's uh, really it uh, from a from a uh, uh, from a labels perspective. So 